I'm your host, everyone, Dr. Real Estate, and welcome to the Triple M Show, where all we're going to talk about is mindset, muscle, and money. Welcome, guys, to another episode of the Triple M Show, where we talk about money. Well, actually, the... I fucked that up already. So anyways, <laughs> what are we talking first? about mindset, muscle, and money? Okay, so mindset is first. Mindset is first. We're not going to sh- go straight away into muscle. We might, depending on how <laughs> this that. goes. I love that. But mindset, <laughs> muscle, and money, right? Three categories. Three categories okay. that are all woven and interconnected today. So, guys, I have my very good friend, uh, bodybuilding aficionado, <laughs> former full-blown meathead, Juice out of his mind in his <sighs> 30s and 20s. That kind of hurts. That, that <laughs> kind of hurts. Former, like I don't really. No, no, he's like, still there. I, I'm somewhat look there. At those, look at his arms. I mean, come on. Jin, what's going on, bro? What's up, brother? How are you? Oh, man, I love, I, I fucking love connecting with him every chance I can. I literally say that to all my friends, even my son. I, and I'm like, I love it. I, I, for real, I, I say it to my son. I'm like, um, when you love what you do, it's great. But when you love the people you do it with, it's like the, probably the best thing, right? right. Cause, 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 and if it wasn't for the time constraints, I could spend all day here with you. I love it. And we could talk about anything. We talk about fucking lint on my socks. <laughs> <laughs> it would still just be something that would be worthwhile, at least for me, in terms of having that experience and just chilling with you. So for real, I, I really Thank love you, hanging bro. out with you. Thank so. you, bro. And, and then ha- this, is not, like, this is aside from the work and then right. on top of the work. So it's really it. cool. I love it. Well... Let's get right into it, sure, right? Sure, sure, sure. Everybody that's listening to this, it's yeah. all about, like I said, mindset, muscle, and money. In all areas of our business, I'm sure we've interconnected them in some way. So yeah. for you, tell us, tell the audience, what do you do? What's your line of business? How long have you been doing it? Go. Oh, man, it's, it's kind of boring, so I don't want to go too much into okay. it. Keep um, it short and sweet. No, I, th- I think for the most part, the, the gist of it is I'm a photographer first, started the business for my son, um, you know, I, I guess it, it's going to go longer than I thought. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying it's right. to keep it like short, but it, it's, it's not going to be too short. Um, so I started the business for my son because as a baby, like I didn't have any pictures of myself. I grew up in China. I was born in China and I have maybe two, maybe three pictures of myself as a baby. Wow. Like, like literally no, and they were black and white and everything. We we're poor as can be. So when I found out I was going to be a dad, I was like, you know what? I got to learn the camera, learn how to take pictures. And uh, so I did that. And it just really snowballed. Wow. And, um, you know, when we talk about mindset, I think we, t- we have to talk about how you look at situations um, that, that come into your life, right? Because right. C- during COVID, um, you know, I was already a photographer. And during COVID, I, I really changed my mindset in terms of, what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. I was already doing real estate. I was primarily aiming to be a wedding photographer. Okay. And when COVID hit, nobody was getting married. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I think I need to change my uh, event photography. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I did. I pivoted because people were calling me into like real estate shoots. I was like, oh, you know what? Let me see if there's something here. So I bought a bunch of new cameras, lenses, 360s, drones, which I was already doing. And I just kind of got better at it. And then I just said, you know what? Let me just kind of stick in this. And it's my sweet spot. And, and, and honestly, now that we talk about it, it's thanks to you in large part um, in terms of how I've grown um, because if you remember... Yeah. Let's see if I do. Th- th- this, this, the first time that you called me, I was on a date with my girl and we were in Hoboken. Okay. And you had called me and you were like, hey, Jin, you don't know me, but uh, we followed you on Instagram and then I was like, okay, cool. And, I was like, and you were like, um, so my photographer is going to be on vacation and, and I need to shoot tomorrow. Can, can you come by? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, fuck. Drop everything and come. <laughs> but bro, that, that's basically what I did. I was like, you know what? Um, you know what? Let me just do it. Right. You, know, you kind of t- take that chance. And um, from there, I remember the first time I met you and Tiana. <laughs> that shit was hilarious because... I met you, and do you remember that? I Vaguely, it, in Clifton. It, I remember we were in it Clifton. It was in Clifton. Yeah, yeah. I think it was on Mountain Ave. It might have been one of those. It, we, we had parked in, in, in the church. We were on Mount Prospect. It, Mount Prospect. Yeah, yeah. We parked in the church, and then we go across the street, and I was like, oh, let me go ahead and start to shoot. And I was wearing something like this, Yeah. and you were like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Babe, come here. Get, get me on this Instagram. And he's like, hey, guys, we're in front of my news listing. 
you know, 123 Mount Street. But wait, wait, hold on. Check out the fucking arms on my photographer. <laughs> I did say and that. I think oh my from, God. from that point on, I was like, I think I'm going to have a good relationship with this guy. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and from then, I think really from, from that point on, every single, even the bad times that we've right. had, like it's, right. it wasn't bad because we were able to like keep it such an awesome relationship. Right. And it was just so easy to work with. And, and I can say that about you and your mindset is that in business, um, you're, you're ruthless, but you're very level headed. Right. And you're fucking awesome to work with. So I love Thank it. you, bro. And I, you know what? It's funny because I don't know how I came across you. I really don't. I don't remember. I was just scrolling on Instagram. You probably had a muscle picture on Instagram. I swear to God, I think I saw a muscle picture. Tim, I'm, I'm telling this guy how I remember every detail about the no, first time no. we met. I remember. He barely remembers how the <laughs> fuck I even. Oh my god! I remember goodness. the shoot, but I, I'm trying to remember how I came across your profile. It definitely had to have been some type of muscle pictures because you used to post a lot of muscle pictures yeah, yeah, yeah. on your social. And now, and you know, listen. I this, still you still do. do. You Not still as much do. as you do. <laughs> but this is a show about muscles. So yeah, I got. Yeah, yeah. I, I resonated with somebody that had jacked arms, and I reached out to you. And ever since, dude, I have not. You know, you're you're my guy. Love you know, it. and everybody out there, and you're my guy. <laughs> 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 uh, but tell us about now, kind of in terms of the business with your photography business, kind of what you've employed on the bodybuilding side of the business, uh, bodybuilding side of the spectrum, right? Because in bodybuilding, in getting jacked and getting lean, right? There's discipline, yeah, there's, uh, there's dedication, and yeah. you got to be persistent, right? Yeah. Those three things are in fitness and in bodybuilding. Yeah. How do you use those principles in your business? Dude, they're, they're so similar, it's not even funny. Like, and, and it's something I'm trying to teach my kids. Okay. Because I force them to work out uh, at least once a day. And, and it's, it's something that I can honestly say that um, I work out at least once a day. I mean, in some shape or form, whether it be going for a little brisk walk to running a mile to doing a hardcore workout to doing sauna to doing cold plunges. So all those things are a direct relationship to how I run my business because I'm basically always practicing and I'm always working in this same shape or form. Okay. So like, it's as dumb as it sounds, as a photographer, I always have a camera on. Like I always, have, like I literally have a camera in my sunglasses now. And it's, <laughs> and, and it's because I like, I need to have this technology so that I, I'm always ready for the moment, so to speak. But then in, um, in that same mentality of, you know, the things that I'm learning in fitness to constantly do it every day, I basically relate it to my business where I do practice my business. And, and so what I mean by that is um, I, I, I am always thinking about how to help the, my clients, realtors, okay. you know, um, brokers, developers, stuff like that. I'm always thinking, I'm like, okay, what's the next technology that's going to be better? Like right now I'm actually thinking about what's the Vision Pro? You know what, what that is. Yeah, right? I do. I'm, I'm like, okay, so what's the Vision Pro and how is it going to be applicable in real estate in the coming years. Right. I don't think it's going to be there in the next two to three years, but I think certainly for the next five to seven years, the Vision Pro or the different iterations of that 360 augmented reality slash craziness new world that we're in, I, right. think, I think it's going to be a thing. So, But the cool thing is I really can envision where, you know, um, in the future, realtors are just going to be like, oh, I want to see what Goose Media looks like. All right, well, put on the Vision Pros. And then you get to walk around in your living room, but yet you're walking around this room. You're seeing the backdrop. You're seeing the desk. You're seeing the bathroom nice. and everything else. I think, I think that's what's going to happen. You know, I, I think we're, we're getting there. So I'm kind of like in the back of my mind thinking about this technology, thinking about how it's going to be useful. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that, like I said, to, to, to relate it back to fitness, I am always trying new things, staying on top of things, and just every day just doing it. Nice. Doing nice. it. Like, I don't remember the last time I, I've had a day off, so to speak, even though my workouts, my workouts aren't as hardcore as yours. I mean, <laughs> you and Fernando, you guys go in. We go ham. You do. You we do. go ham. I think those days are over for me and or I don't have as much time to do it because you don't right. have kids yet. True. And I have too many kids. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's so sad because like fitness to me these days is, is actually just working out in my living room, trying to spend time with my daughter. And then Beautiful. Just, yeah, it really is, but it's it's kind of cool because it's it's like an 
It, it's just like in business, right? right. It, it does change. <clears throat> business changes, right? Because we know that real estate isn't going to always stay this great. Correct. And it's been really freaking good. Yep. Um, we're going to have- To some of us. Yeah, peaks and valleys. Peaks, yeah, and, peaks valleys. and valleys. And, and so I, I look at it in my fitness now. You know, I'm not as jacked as I used to be. But at the same time, fitness is still a big part of my life. And so I want to make sure that I can do that. And then I want to make sure I get my kids and my family to do it's that. Beautiful. Just as much as how they're going to treat this fitness- is probably gonna how they do their professional and or you know career and stuff like that. The, the, the saying that I use um, to my kids all the time, and I tell them it relates to everything. It's how you do one thing is how you do everything. Love that. And it's so true. Love that, That's dude. A great it's so one. true. It's something as stupid as like how you take off your shoes when you go into somebody's house. Because so I can true. tell you, my I don't want to single out a kid. <laughs> One of my kids, <laughs> when they come in, uh, to the, when they come come, come to the house, they'll just take off the shoes, just kick it, they'll <laughs> smack up against the walls, and then just run up the stairs. And then another one of my kids will take it and, you know, grab it, put it together, neatly place it, organize into a corner or wow. something like that. But seriously, how you do one thing is how you do everything. It's and, so true. Yeah. So yeah. true. Yeah. So, so tell us, because I'm interested in this, I can tell you when I got hit with the bodybuilding bug. I was 14. I was a ju- no, I was a freshman or sophomore in high school. Who who was your hero? Who a Jay Cutler, the bodybuilder. Jay body Cutler, he was a man. So I I remember I was my friend we were in religion class and my friend was looking at this remember the Flex Flex, Flex magazine? Hell yeah. Hell I don't yeah. know if they're still around cuz I haven't seen them, yeah. but he was looking at this magazine. And I just saw this gigantic dude on the front cover and I was like, "Hey bro, can I see that?" Dude, and Jay he, Cutler. He still looks very fucking good. He's 52, good. 53 or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And he looks incredible. Exactly. But I saw that front cover of Jay Cutler. Yeah. And I had no idea that people could be this freaking huge. Yeah. And that's when the bodybuilding bug bit me. <laughs> and for like, I was what, four, well, how old are you when you're a sophomore? 14, 15, 16, yeah, yeah. or something like that? Yeah. From that age until I was, you know, competing in my 20s, my goal was just to be. Jacked. <laughs> it hasn't really changed. You're still it, like no, that. it hasn't changed. But dude, I mean, I have to give them the the picture of me in my when I was 25, when yeah, I was yeah. my biggest. I was 242 pounds. Ripped. Ripped. Get the hell. Ripped. Like 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 seven eight percent body fat. Like I was competing for a show. Ripped but, at 240. But I was huge. So, what was your off season weight then? Uh, that year it was like 260. Holy shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm two two ten right now. Right, right, right. So I just but. Extreme guys, like in my twenties. Listen, this is a no holds bar fucking show. <laughs> I was on all types of fucking performance enhancing drugs. Everything. You mean imagined. like creatine? <laughs> yes. And 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 what was that? Um, Androstendione or whatever. <laughs> that I, Mark McGuire one. <laughs> I used to I used to lace my anabolic shots with creatine in the solution. Do you remember M one T? No, I M one T. M one T. That no. was a thing. No, I don't remember. It was, a thing. it was a thing. Really? Yeah. No, nah, I, I just stuck to trend and deep. Uh, muscle tech. Oh my god, muscle cell tech. Cell tech. Cell tech. Cell tech. Yes. Oh my god, <laughs> cell tech. Shit. That was Dude, shit. I was all over cell tech. Me too. I was taking cell tech all the time. Yeah, now I regret it because all that shit is terrible. For it's you. so yeah, bad. Yeah, it's so bad. Do you remember the original Jack uh, pre workout Jack 3D? I do remember. It. I never got into like pre workkouts because I never needed it. Honestly, you don't fucking need. Yeah, it. I don't take pre workouts now. But back then, I, mean, I, I used to do it all like, the time. You and I, we're so good because we both have this energy, this synergy, this right. energy of just kind of like always on the go and always like I could be on two hours of sleep and I could still just be like, all right, where are we going? We're going. Especially if it's like you and me hanging out together. Right, right, right. I feel like we bring so much freaking energy. We do, especially to a listing. Imagine like. Like one of your listings, it's like an old lady. We go in and we come in, you come in jacked. I come in, all right, let's take these pictures. <laughs> and so when was your, because that was Jay Cutler, right? And yeah, I yeah. think now, like now that I'm thinking about it, my heroes are all fucking jacked. So yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger was my first oh, hell hero. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, Sylvester Stallone, hell another yeah. one He's of my. still jacked. He's still jacked. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I love The Rock. Dwayne The Rock, he's like a big idol of mine. He tweeted me, bro. No, he did he? I swear to God. What? I swear to God. The Rock, if you're watching this, please retweet these or just post it on your social if possible. Probably not, but it's okay. He tweeted me. What? Yeah. This was um, four or five years ago. Actually, you know, it might have been six years ago. So I, I had this stupid, you know the Rock's thing when he was yeah. re- wrestling. So I, I decided to 
this is when I was, you know, into the video thing. And I was like, you know what? Let me do a mock-up routine. It was for my son. Because keep in mind, I got into the photography business for my son. Right, right. So I did a little routine of, uh, like, I was like, uh, here's my nighttime routine with my son. And it really was. What right. I would do is I would take him. He's naked. I'd get him out of the tub. And I would take him and I'd do, like, a like a rock bottom onto the bed. That's and awesome. then I dropped a people's elbow That's on awesome. him. That's awesome. So I filmed it. And then I tagged the rock. And... He must have been drunk or something because he he had, <laughs> uh, he re, uh, retweeted me or at replied me or whatever it was because I posted on Instagram that okay. fed to Twitter which is now X and there's so much going on it, but anyway um he responded he, he, I was like he, this is really my night, nighttime routine and the Rock re replied and he was like uh, watch out little bro uh, little man's gonna grow up and he's gonna be doing that to you in a few years that's awesome and it was dude. the coolest thing it was the coolest thing I mean I think the Rock realizes that like those little tweets those little replies. They mean so much to people. Like they, right. they just like stay with you for so long. Dude, I'll, I'll awesome. never forget that. That's yeah. beautiful. But but no no. I mean, The Rock. He, he's still relevant now. Of course, people still look up to him now. Right. right. I mean, um, I think mine was Lee Priest. Oh, Lee Priest. The reason is because he's like a midget like me. <laughs> yeah, he's like five three. Although most bodybuilders now, they're they're right around like my height. On the smaller, yeah, shorter yeah, side. Yeah. Lee Priest was a monster. Bro. He was. His he arms was. were huge. And, and he was the first one to have that Superman. Yeah, like, I remember. Uh, triangle thing. I remember. That logo. And it was just like, it was just the coolest thing. When I saw it, I was like, oh, man, I want to be like him. That's awesome. Yeah, How old man. were you when that happened? I think I was right around like 21, 22. The funny thing about me is I've, I've been in fitness my whole entire life. Which is what's crazy. Like, like growing up, I was, I was a skateboarder. I was in, in uh, high school track and field. Right. Of all things, I was a pole vaulter. Wow. I haven't grown in height. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just, you know, the energy that I always had as a kid, um, I was able to take skateboarding and somehow put that craziness into pole vaulting. I, I was, uh, how did I do? In the meet of champions, I was number seven. So that's all of the people in New Jersey. Okay. And then uh, in the regionals, I think I was like number two or three. In the state sectionals, I was like number one or something like that. Okay. I was, I was pretty good. Um, so you were very competitive all throughout your life. I never looked at it as competition. You even just, now. You were just dude, working. Even now, I don't look at like, I don't look at my work as competition because okay. I just look at it as like, it's shit I like to do. That's awesome. My skateboarding too. Right. And, but, but, but I think if I had changed my attitude to being like, oh, this is competition, it probably would have made me a better skateboarder. It would have made me a better pole vaulter. Hell, even in business now, if right. I look at it as like, all right, Goose Media is now on my ass. <laughs> now I got to you know, do more shit. I got to do more podcasts. Right. Maybe that'll kind of like elevate my game, but then I'm like, I don't know. I love what I'm doing now. That's awesome. You know, I love what I'm doing. And I'm sure you love what you're doing too. Dude, I, you know, right now I've gone through different stages in my career, yeah. right? The, I had Phil on before and... I failed in seven different businesses before I found real estate. And for, you know, I've been in the business now almost 11 years. Those eight or nine years, I was like balls to the wall. Like when I see all these other agents posting like their MLS sheets and like they're busy on the weekend showing properties, that was me. Yeah. Like that was my Saturdays and my Sundays, 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. until 6, 7, I would book myself Saturdays and Sundays. And I did that for like eight years, dude. Yeah. Eight years, nine years. But I mean, you still do that kind of stuff now. I do. Well, not really. It, 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 no. So now it's more into like training, training mentoring. and mentoring yeah. and coaching agents. And yeah. I freaking love that. I love that too. Like I am, I'm a natural teacher. I've always been a teacher. I've yeah. taught organic chemistry and, you know, when I was a professor. In that Dude, you know life. what? I already know this kind of, yeah. but the, the, the doctor of real estate thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, I got to give you so much kudos to that because like it, fucking sticks it does it sticks it does like there are so many people um that i've talked to and and instead of saying hey do you know peter patapia <laughs> i don't know how to say your fucking last name patapia <laughs> <Tilapia>. <laughs> by the way remember we have, you have your cousin i'm friends with your cousin yes eric eric oh yeah. my god oh my god small world <laughs> exactly um anyway so instead of me referring you to like oh Pete, i'm like oh dr real estate they're like oh we love him and everything like that. It's just, you know it's it's a funny Quick, very funny story. When I was my second year in the business, I was yeah. part-time. I was getting my PhD in chemistry, and I had landed my first million-dollar listing. Nice. It was in Wayne, nice. and it was a cold call. I don't know how the hell I freaking got it because I was terrible at cold call. I like, want to talk to you about the cold call. Of course. But go ahead, tell me so, so his name was Howard, and God bless his soul. He passed away a couple of years ago, but he's really the one that opened up 
my the door in my career. Right. And he was like a business owner, but he was like in marketing or something like that. And right. I told him that I was getting my PhD. Right. He's the one that literally told me, you know what you should do? You should call yourself the doctor of New Jersey real estate. Oh, man. You mean but, to tell but me that I thought, you didn't come up with the name? No. I thought it was the dumbest name the doctor known of real to estate. man. And I said, Howard, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be laughed off. Like, no, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> he, and he was like all into it. He's like, no. He's like, nobody's doing it. I've never heard of somebody call themselves doctor of New Jersey real estate. He's like, just do it. And that's when I started, I changed it to Dr. Real Estate. Yeah, and then yeah, that's that. when I started doing Dr. Real Estate. You, you know, there's a stuck. couple, you know, there's a couple other. There are a bunch. Like similar names. It's but like there's only one. The Real Estate Doctor. No, there's only one. It's okay. And by the way, if, they're, if you're watching The Real Estate Doctor, I, I'm just kidding. You, you're, you're just as cool. Make sure to call me for your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how the Dr. Real Estate brand love it. blew up. I right? freaking love that. I that, love that, that's, man. That was it. It sticks. I, I love having a name that you just, like, people know you by that name, and that's... Yeah. Wait, do you do your clients know that, too? Yes. Like, they don't call you, like, hey, Peter? No, like, hey, they call doctor. me Doc. Doc. They're I like, Doc. That. I actually just had a client reach out to me on social media Do you two weeks think ago. that they, they then think that, oh, this guy's a doctor. He's got to be great. He's going to sell my house. I, a I, doctor I, sold my house. I mean, I leveraged that in Hell every yeah. listing appointment. Hell yeah. I, I always hit them with, well, what do you have different than anybody, than that other agent? I always hit them with, well, I do have something that none of them have in the state PhD. of New Jersey. I was yeah. like, which, how many of them have a doctorate degree? How many yeah. of them have a PhD? Yeah. Not in, and I'm sorry to say this, but not in political science or in English. I said, I have a doctorate degree in an extremely quantitative field. Yeah. Right? There's not too many people that have that. That Love is it. the difference. between, And I always Hell took yeah. them like that. Hell yeah. These higher price listings that I got, that's what I always use. Yeah. And it's my brand, right? And I learned this branding from Ryan Sernhan because I used to watch Hell Million yeah. Dollar Listing in New yep. York 10 yep. years ago. Yeah. And he always used to stress that, even on the show. So I was like, yeah, yeah, let's stick to that. Your branding is so consistent now, and I love it because you're, you're the only one that's been consistent. And like when we talk about people and like how they have to kind of, I, I think this is the reason I left the corporate world, okay? Right. Like the, the, the whole entire, like, wearing like a suit and tie or just getting dressed up. And then when you go there, you got to be pretend to be nice to your boss. <laughs> Dude, I am so genuine in how I am now. Right. And we do, it's a good thing. Listen, I'm not an asshole. Course, Far from course. it. Like, but when you got I'm, no filter. When, yeah, but, but when I'm on yeah. a shoot, I am unapologetically myself. Yeah. Which hopefully is a very good thing to most people. Right. But, um, and that's how you are. Right. That's how you are. And, I that, am. and that's why I love our working relationship because it, we seldomly have to like put on a different hat or, no, we're, or put up We're a different unapologetically hat. ourselves. And yeah. listen, I know this. Yeah. Some people love it, some people don't. And it's okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I, I it's am not for me. Everybody. You know, yeah. I'm me. It's, yeah. it's, it's perfectly fine. But yeah. now going back into the muscle part, right? No, no, no. I want to, okay, I want to take, take just a quick second to yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of give you kudos, bro. Thank and, you. And I know this is off script. And I don't know to what extent it's about mindset, but I fucking love that you lead your team with the old school way of doing business. Right. The cold calling, the right. script. Oh my goodness. So I have a sales background. <laughs> okay. But when when I hear I didn't know that. Guy, oh, dude, I, I did. But 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 when I hear your team yeah. following your script. And then they're getting these leads and they're turning into listing appointments. And I'm like, oh, man. Right. It, it, again, kudos, bro. I, I love that. Because it takes work ethic, man. It does. You're not, you're not a regular realtor sitting there waiting for the business to come to you. You're going out there getting it. Yeah. You're going out there and cold calling people. Right. I almost and did something this morning because it started snowing. I yeah. almost like took a video and be like, listen, guys, Dr. Real Estate's team is definitely calling <laughs> everybody now because it's snowing. <laughs> Everybody's home. Dude, it, and it's... It's not, you know, it's funny now in retrospect, I was very fortunate because yeah. my old former broker and owner, he kind of instilled all of this in me. You know, hey, you, do, you can't afford $1,000 a month in Zillow? No problem. You know mortgages inside and out? You know how to pre-qualify a buyer? Here, there's this whole area that has multifamilies and renters. Cold call them, have a conversation with them, convert them over to buyers. Hell yeah. That's what I used to do. Hell That's yeah. how I got into cold calling. Yeah. by cold calling renters to convert them over to buyers. And then it took me a long time before I could actually use it and convert sellers because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, <laughs> right? And now with my agents, the script that I've developed has been really three years in the making. Gold. 
three or four years in the making. That's and good. now it's just, I tell my agents, guys, I already know. If you make X amount of calls for oh, Monday dude, it's through such Friday, a numbers game. It's like, such a numbers game. It's like a, it's almost a guarantee that if yeah. you actually do it in 90 days or less, you're going to get a listing. Yeah. The only reason you're not is because you're not putting in the work. Yeah. Pure simple. That's it. Which goes back to how you do one thing is how you do everything. Ooh. I'm telling you, bro, it's just so true. Ooh. I'm like, if you have the same work ethic, you show up every day, you make the 100 calls, you talk to 10 people, one of them's going to show you that they're interested, and then you add that to the list of people interested, and then you call them back, now you're generating a list and a funnel, and it just keeps going. Right. What's well, the same thing with fitness, right? Same. You don't show up one day, do 100 burpees, all right, I'm done. No, you're going to do something else tomorrow. You're going to keep go working right. on your fitness and everything. Right, right. I mean, it's so true because it's the same. And look, it's the same thing, same mindset for money, same mindset for relationships and everything else. So it, it's so consistent. Dude, yeah. it, it's so true because in, in fitness, right, when you're dieting for a show yeah. or you're, you want to get stronger, whatever, right? Yeah. It takes time. Oh, right. If, if when I, you're dieting for a show, dude, it takes a it lot takes of a time. Lot of, for me, that when, I, when I used to complete, uh, compete, yeah. It used to take me about 18 to 20 weeks to actually get in tip-top shape. Damn, that's a lot of cutting. <laughs> and, and, and it was, it was, you know, I'm a stocky guy, so, yeah. like, I gain fat pretty easily. Yeah. But it takes me a long time to start dieting. And back then in my 20s, honestly, I didn't know anything about creating calorie deficits. I would just go with how my body looked. Now, I do... I really do subscribe to calorie deficit and, and being just as consistent as I possibly can. Yeah. But, dude, it takes time. It You're does. not going to see results in a week two weeks three weeks by four or five six you, you might start some, seeing a little yeah, change yeah. by week 12 by week oh, yeah. 14 you're, you're, you're like, oh shit like, but it's the same thing in same business thing. and in, in in your fitness world right because if you're doing 100 right. cold calls in one day you don't get the 10 people interested you might get 99 hang-ups right oh well do it the next day right. now you're at maybe 90 hang-ups right and do the next day. Now you're at 80. Maybe do the next day. Oh, you have somebody interested. And those are the short-term wins, right? Yeah. Because those short-term wins, early on when up. you're doing something new, yep. whether yep. it's on the first week or the second week or the third week, those short-term wins allow yeah. you to say, oh, you know what? Okay, I'm getting there. I'm yeah. progressing. Same thing in fitness, right? In yeah. bodybuilding. Short-term wins, you lost two pounds. Short-term wins, oh, I see a vein in my freaking arm. <laughs> oh my God, this is, all right, I'm getting there. Oh God. It's the same thing in business, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. how I, that's how I, the principles of muscle is how I really coach my agents yep. because I know these short term wins on a cold call. By week two, if they're doing it, they're going to get somebody on the phone that's telling them, hey, I did this to the property, I did this to the property. Yep. And then you run the numbers, it's a number that they really love. And now they book an appointment by week yeah. three. Yeah. Those short-term wins matter. I, I mean, it's it's almost like this formula is, is this direct formula for success. You just gotta just gotta do it. Put up with the sock. Yes, it's the same thing as in fitness, right? That mindset of just like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and run two miles today, and then I'm gonna go ahead and eat mostly clean foods, right? And then I'm gonna get my sleep, and you're gonna look good. So now that you just said that, this is great, right? Now I love where this is sleep. going. <laughs> nutrition yeah right? yeah yeah absolutely in 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 bodybuilding and fitness or whatever it used to be like chicken fish Ugh. beef rice broccoli, tilapia tilapia and broccoli <laughs> and rice the maybe sweet potatoes way. oatmeal right yeah, yeah 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 and now with all this reachers coming out and like the topic of longevity and yeah. you know all the shit that's processed in yep. our food what is your what is your diet are you plant-based are you animal-based are you in the middle are you pescatarian dude you know what's fucking crazy Yes. <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it's so true because um, I follow a lot of experts in the longevity and the fitness field. So you have some of them that are all in on vegetarian. Right. All in. Uh, David Sinclair, um, Brian Johnson, a lot of those people. They're, they're like, okay, like Brian Johnson's vegan and right. the dude's insane. Right. Granted, he spends millions and he's got a team of doctors. But in any case... So I subscribe to that. Okay. And, and so let's just say on like maybe Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're like, okay, we're having oatmeal. We're eating salads. We're eating uh, tempeh. Do you know what tempeh is? Uh, it's delicious. It's really good. Yeah. It's so anyway, delicious. You, you're, you're eating these like uh, vegetables and fruit, and, 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 and that's, that's something I actually love to do too. But then I'll like turn on a podcast or I'll listen to like a podcast about the benefits of eating really good grass-fed beef. 
Right. And then you're like, oh shit. Maybe I should be doing that. Yeah. So, 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 so what I'm saying is I do both. You do both. I do both. And I mean, we all know one thing, right? Um, M&Ms and Coke and <sighs> soda and shit like that. that that's not going to help. I so, love so, M&Ms. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and no, muffins. But, no, but, and but, donuts. Oh, God. I, I really don't remember the last time I had a donut. Oh, fuck. Really? Come on. It, it, I mean, an indulgence, sure, but I, I don't remember the last time I've had it. But what I'm saying is when it comes to the fitness side of things, I subscribe to the things that I think based on my research that I'm going to take away. Okay. And that's, that's kind of what you do, right? You kind of like, all right, if this one guy is saying that um, there's merit to have a vegetarian, vegan-based diet, then go ahead, I'll subscribe to that. And if the other guy says, all right, eating grass-fed beef is great, I'm do some of that too. So but- how regularly do you, it's like for, for example, you know, for me, I just got my blow work done, right? So my testosterone is about 745, 750, nice. which is pretty good. Yeah. I'm right? in mean, like that. What's the upper limit? Nine hundred thirty-seven. Oh shit! Thirty. Well, I'm gonna be thirty-eight, right? But you know, listen, full blower guys. I'm on TRT. Like, I think there's nothing wrong with a little bit of testosterone. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a beautiful thing. There's this big stigma with uh, testosterone. I, I think it's more accepted these days. I hope. I, yeah. I, I hope it is. But with that, I mean, it's still a drug, so you have yeah. to take care of your vitals, right? Absolutely. Your Have you ever heard of your ABCs and Ds in the like, vitamins? In, no, no, in in health. No. So A is A one C. It's the oh yeah yeah yeah. It's yeah, the yeah. A. What is it called? It's the A one C is A one C for diabetes or whatever. Yeah, yeah yeah. B blood pressure. Right. C cholesterol. Right. And D deposition. So like right. testosterone, all this stuff. Right right right. As as we grow older, right, thirty five in our thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, we really have to take care of our A, B, Cs, and Ds because that's what's going to lead to longevity. On my side of the family, we suffer from diabetes. You're Mexican, right? Mexican, dude. You know, there's a part of Mexico, or there's a country, or, or, or a region of Mexico, yeah, that you probably know this. Okay, they in their religion, okay, Coca Cola is a part of their religion. <laughs> I had no idea that. No, the, I didn't. Dude, look it up. I'm no, telling you, I'll send I you the didn't. video. They, it, it's, it's probably also the worst part of Mexico because everybody's <laughs> diabetic. And it's really true. I mean, but, but in their religion, um, they drink and they say Coca-Cola is the answer. They give it to the kids and everything. What? I'm Goose, we need to fact check this. You can fact check it right now. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, put it in YouTube or Google. Uh, Mexico, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola religion. Yeah. Yeah. For real. <laughs> it, it's in there. I'm telling you. It's, it's pretty crazy. Dude, that's... Crazy. If, yeah, yeah. if if he says that this is real, I'm gonna be blown away. It's real. But okay, going back to blood work. Uh, do you stay on top of your blood work? You know, do you kind of, you know, especially with the diets, right? Because yeah. my blood work came back. I had my triglycerides are are high, which right. I know it's coming from all the processed sugar and all the other stuff that I'm right. eating. Right. Triglycerides are a little are a little high in the high yeah. end. Um, Testosterone is fine, seven seven forty, seven fifty. Yeah. Right, but. I have a history of heart disease and, and stroke in my family. So those, didn't your dad die of that? He he had a heart attack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I got to take that shit serious now in my thirties because I don't want to plop over when I'm fifty five and sixty yeah. from a freaking heart attack, right, or yeah. a stroke. So how well do you kind of incorporate that into your lifestyle with knowing all that? So you know, I'm I'm in my forties. I just turned forty. No. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Holy. Yeah, I'm forty five. I just turned forty five a few days ago. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah, yeah, isn't that crazy? But wow. um, I think um, as, as now that I'm transitioning into, I think uh, Peter Attila calls it the second half of right. your life, right? Um, I look at fitness as in this is more of a necessity of how I go about with fitness. It's not like how you and I talked about bodybuilding days. Right. This is more of um, fitness for longevity, longevity. fitness for um, the, the, the key things I focus on are like uh, mus- muscular development and, and kind of like um, just not losing it. Right. Just, just not losing muscle. Because because from 40 to 50 to 50 to 60 to 60 to 70, dude, you lose a substantial amount of muscle mass. I'm telling you, it, it's bad. So so I'm trying to make sure that I am working out there. But then there's so many other components. Right. And you, we could probably need to talk about it with a, another podcast, but um, they talk about things like just being able to get up from a fall right. is a big indicator of how long you're going to live and, and amongst other things. So the, the level of your muscle mass as you age is also another indicator or a predictor of um, mortality. It, it's pretty crazy. So, um, yeah. but yeah, I, I, 
I've changed to more of um, fitness is more of flexibility, mobility, uh, strength, specifically with muscle mass and everything, okay. but not necessarily gaining muscle. And I'm not necessarily trying to be a gymnast, just trying to make sure that I'm flexible enough. And then I, I'm also trying to work on grip strength too. Okay. So these are the different ways that my fitness has evolved. And um, I don't know where else it's going to go, but I, I mean, I, I actually like it. My workouts are Dude, that's awesome different. because, you know, yeah, I mean, now I'm 30, I'm going to be 38 in April. So yeah. in my 20s, early 30s, yeah. pure bodybuilding, right? Yeah, yeah. Chest on Monday, back, shoulders, ch quads. Ch ch chest and tries, chest and back, tries and buys, back and buys, legs, 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 shoulders, arms. And arms. Yeah. That's the split, right? Yeah. And what, yeah, you look incredible if you're, you're dieting, but you got no flexibility. You got yeah. no mobility, yep. right? You, you know, your muscles are getting big, but your tendons are really yeah. not catching up, right? So you can set yourself up for a, a, a lot of really bad things that can happen with yeah. that, right? So now in my 30s, and I don't know if you knew this too, but on the eve of my what was going to be my last competition, right before I turned 30, I completely tore my quadricep tendon right off the oh, bone. shit. And I was in... It was like six weeks or eight weeks out from the show, oh, and I was looking really lean, and I was looking, I was gonna be my best show ever. And I was just running down the stairs, and I tripped. <laughs> awkward fall, like oh. an awkward landing. Oh. And I heard firecrackers in my knee, oh. and then the tendon just snapped. Did you have surgery? I had surgery. They had to reattach it back to the bone. Oh my right? God. Right? My orthopedic surgeon, uh, Dr. Mies and Hackensack, shout out to you, Dr. Mies, you're amazing. Um, he literally told me, he's like, hey, when I opened you up, your tendon was split down the middle like Oof. a Y. And he said, you have tiny microscopic tears in your whole entire tendon. Oh, so he's like, you got to be careful with your left leg because if your right knee is like this, your left leg is like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, do you know where, why this happened? I'm like, I have no idea, doc. And he's like, and he, he, he didn't bullshit. He was straight up. He's that? like... How long and how much was your dose for anabolics for the last <laughs> 10 years? He straight up asked oh, me that. Shit. And I was like, I don't know. I was doing a gram of test a week and uh, trend and D-ball here and there. <sighs> and he is like, okay, and how long were you doing this for? And I was like, I started, I started doing anabolics when I was 21. <laughs> and I didn't stop until I was 30, until I got hurt. And he's oh, like, shit. he's like, He's like, Pete, how can you be this stupid? He straight up told me that. He's like, yeah. how can you be this stupid? You have a doctorate degree. I'm sure you read the literature. Supra-physiological dosage of anabolics, testosterone and its right. derivatives, over time, prolonged time, yeah. literally down-regulates the mm -hmm. messenger, messenger RNA for collagen synthesis. Right. It literally, there's papers out there that show that supra-physiological doses of these anabolics over prolonged periods Makes of time sense. leads to down-regulation of collagen and so the he, way that you're lifting too. and the way that you're lifting <laughs> so he's like you got bigger you had incredible muscles but simultaneously your tendons were not getting stronger they were getting weaker yeah it was bound to happen oh so that was a rude awakening for me at 30 years old yeah so now going into my 30s right 37 38 it's not about bench pressing 315 it's not about squatting 500 pounds anymore yeah. i got into crossfit i love that I'm running now. I, I could do a mile in eight minutes, which is not terrible. That's, that's really fucking good. It's and for me for your weight for too. For me, it's incredible. I just did it that's this great. morning, actually. No a mile shit. in wow. eight point eight minutes and fifteen seconds. You know, we never officially had a workout together. We didn't. We have to. We should sure. do Murph together this year. I'm over to it. You've done a Murph before? Yeah. You know what it is? Yeah. We should do it. I'm down. With, like we're gonna do it. We're gonna do a Murph together. We'll do it. It's two mile run, three hundred. No, isn't it 100, 200, 300? Yeah, it's 100 pull-ups, 200 yeah. push-ups, push 300 air squats. And then a mile. And then a mile run. Yeah. that's You got to do it in 30 minutes or less. No, no, no. It's 45, I believe. Is it 45? For it, like, they say if you do it in under 45 minutes, it, it's like a very good time. 30 is like athletes, if I'm, that's even listen, possible. I'm not chasing that. <laughs> I'm not chasing that. Like I said, these days, I don't care to compete in that manner. Yeah. Um. I, I, I will do it, but yeah. I'm going to do it to my pace. That's just, good. Just like in my business, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and now it's, like I said, it's, it's just about mobility. It's about functionality. And yeah. it's about longevity for oh, yeah. me. By the way, when are you going to come over for a cold plunge? Oh, fuck. Dude. I have a cold plunge. You know that. I have it. 
Honestly, I'm going to piggyback on what Phil told me in this previous podcast. I have a lot of fucking fear with that. I am a little bitch when it comes to the cold. That's why you got to do it. <sighs> that, that, listen, listen. Okay, to all of Pete's <laughs> agents that are watching, that are talking about how they don't like to cold call and that you get afraid of cold calling, this is the equivalent. Pete's <laughs> afraid of the cold. So to, to combat that, you would tell the agent, all right, well, if you don't like talking to strangers and cold calling, you got to do it. Right. Well, bitch, you got to do it. <laughs> you got to get in the cold plunge. <clears throat> it you know, sucks, but it's it, it's uh, it, it, it's worth it. Um, you know, I'm gonna do it. I'll do it. I'll men do it. Mentally, it's worth it. I'll do it yeah. with you. Yeah, you should. We'll do a Murph together too. We'll do a Murph and then do in the cold plunge. I love it. It won't, it won't be that bad. All so. right. So we went over nutrition, what you subscribe to. We yeah. went over to your fitness regimen. Now, how your fitness has evolved, and it, it's funny. I think dudes out there. Right, yeah. because there's so much stuff out there on social media right now, mm -hmm. right? But we're, you know, we're average Joes, right? We're the average Joe that's in the gym training or used to be the average meathead training, yeah. right? We're not athletes. We're not competing in, you know, IFBB pros and all that other stuff, right? So there's a lot of guys out there that may be going through what you and I are going through right now. Definitely. Right? The next part of our life, right? Yeah. Even the 20-year-olds watching this that are, thinking about pumping all these anabolics in you, my opinion, don't do it. One of the, I really wish I waited until I was 30, yeah. truthfully. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 but, but it's, it, I think if there's any takeaway from, from listening to this podcast is, is really talk about developing your passion for doing what you love. Yes. And, and then just embracing the suck that comes with it. Right. And then just knowing that how you do one thing is how you do everything. Right. So just apply that principle to everything that you do. Right. And I think it'll just be a matter of time when it becomes like a successful thing. Yeah. And I think that's so true because at the end of the day, you know, you can kind of chime in on this in any type of business. It doesn't matter what you're doing, right? There's always these like cycles, right? You have yeah. like in the beginning, you're really excited to do this new business. Yep. So like, yep. Yeah, let's do it. I can do it. Like, let's get it done. And then when you're actually doing it, shit's not working. You're not making any money. Yep. It's harder than what you thought it was going to be. Yep. So you become a pessimist, right? And then you go into like this valley of despair, yeah. right? Everything's not fucking working. I'm not making any money. Yeah. It's nine months in, 10 months in. What the fuck am I doing wrong, yeah. right? And then usually at that point is when we quit and then do it all over again with the next venture that we're yeah. thinking about, right? So telling the young entrepreneurs out there, you know, the kids in their 20s, the girls in their 20s, you got to go through that. You got to suck. You got to go. You really have to embrace the suck. Um, I, I tell my kids, like right. my, my son is into basketball now. Yeah. You know, he's, he, he, he just watches like Steph Curry just making these shots. And um, I think I saw a, a, a video that talked about the amount of shots that Steph Curry takes, which is in the millions over the course of his years. Right. And he's only made, what is it, like 0.3% of his shots during the actual game time. And yet he's the best three-point shooter. Right. And so... When I talk about that, and then we talk about the discipline of working out, same thing with Kobe and Jordan, and my son just sees the final product. Just like, right. you know, if people were to see your final product, right? right? But it's, it's a lot more than that, right? It's, right? it's really just kind of like the day in, the day out grind of just doing the suck and just doing it. Just like, doing it. Imagine, like, they, they look at our physiques and they're like, oh, look, they're jacked. Do they see the amount of cardio, the amount of nutritional sacrifices, right. the amount of like push-ups, burpees, and all this other shit that you do? <laughs> you know, I mean, I will say I'm 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 a little bit gifted because I'm um I'm gifted in, in that I'm genetically more Best. lean. You're you're genetically Bigger. thick, stocky. Yeah. So you know we have, we have to meet somewhere in the middle. But either <laughs> way, though, for that you know we we're, we're we're a little bit gifted with that. But at the same time, I still feel like. With hard work, what, what's how does the saying go? Which I tell my kids, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Right, and it's so fucking true. Right, because I tell my son, I'm like, listen, bust your ass. If you suck at free throws, work on that. Right, do 200 a day. You're gonna get better. I don't care if it's 10 percent better. If you suck at you know uh, finishing in the paint, work on that. 10 hours a day. Right, dribble the wall. 10 hours a day. Become obsessed with the process, and you're gonna be the best you can be, which will be you'll be an elite, right? You just said something. You just said become obsessed with the process, yeah. right? And I think a lot of entrepreneurs out there, a lot of business owners, and I'm guilty of this as well, I never used to enjoy that. I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know yeah. what that meant, right? But now 
you, we did the real estate team. I mean, you, you've been with me since I was with my first company for nine years. Yeah. Right? And then I made that huge move to these cloud-based brokers. Deep right? faith. And I was, I, I honestly was nervous. I was scared. Yeah. Because I was like, am I good enough to make this work? You know, now I have to train these 50 agents and now they have to be producing agents. So I always had that doubt in my he, head. And it's still going to be there. Of course. Because you're, you're growing and scaling. Right. Which is also something on my side of my business that I need to think about how I'm going to grow and scale. We'll say that for a different podcast, but right. but but you know your 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 job and your role is changing. It's even going to be more important because now not only are you responsible for your own growth, but you're responsible for your team's growth. Right. And then you have to think about it as like, oh shit, if I fail, my team fails. Right. So there's a lot weighing on your shoulders, just like me, right? If I fail in my business, then it's for my family too that I have to worry about. Right. And then of course my photographers and everyone else too. So I have a team. So it's very important that. I think as we ground ourselves in gratitude, we work day in and day out with fitness. We then apply those principles that we're constantly doing right. into our business and into our personal lives. That, that's beautiful, man. Yeah. Enjoy the process. Yeah, right? you, got you have to enjoy the process because now yeah. I'm not that overwhelmed, right? I was taught before, get rid of the word stress. So I'm not even going to say stress anymore. I'm going to say embrace it. Embrace it because yeah. at the end of the day, I'm learning. Yeah. Right, and I'm I'm enjoying the process. And now, when I wake up, and even if shit went south or this deal fell apart, my agents are not closing these deals. Whatever, right? Agents are leaving. It's more of it's okay. You know, yeah. I'm learning right now. But, but but see, that's the thing. Even if real estate goes to absolute shit, right? Even if my photography business goes to absolute shit, the fundamentals of what I learn on how to run my business right. are going to apply to anything else. I can 1, be a fucking janitor at McDonald's. <laughs> no nope, disrespect to janitors at McDonald's. But like, I will be the best damn janitor. It will be the most passionate janitor. Right. And that's, that's the way it really should be, right? You right. learn how to manage your life and then everything else that comes at you, the good and the bad, you, right. you, you take it and really embrace it and run with it. That's freaking Awesome, bro. Yeah, you're right. Because no matter what we do, we can start up a brand new business right now. And yeah. all the stuff that we learned, right, exactly. is going to translate over to that new Absolutely, business. Absolutely, bro. And all these tenets of patience, persistence, dedication, yep. discipline yep. will come into play. And even if it sucks in the beginning, we got to ride the suck yeah. and then just get to the final product. I think you you enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, what, what did I say? Like, you, you enjoy... It's, it's not necessarily about getting to that destination. You enjoy the process. Right. And I, I really do. I, I thoroughly enjoy the process because one day it's going to end. Right. It's going to end for all of us. But for right now, I enjoy the suck, the good, the bad, indifferent, and all of it. So, so what, are your, what are your takes? How much time do we have? One minute. Oh, shit. To wrap this up <laughs> really quickly, as fast as you can, what do you think about NMN, metformin as anti-aging drugs, and will you ever use it to live until you're 20, 120 years old? Um, so it sucks. In America, you can't even get metformin unless you have diabetes. Correct. Legally. So <laughs> I have to figure out, like, okay, because there's substantial evidence for metformin. Um, I don't take m and m and um, but I, I do subscribe to... It, it's going back and forth. I hate this because the literature goes back and forth. Right. Like, I was big onto fasting, and then they're like, well, listen, as you age, you don't necessarily want to fast because you want to make sure that you stave off sarcopenia so you don't want to lose muscle mass. So you do have to eat feed. So like this morning, I had a really good scrumptious breakfast. It was um, eggs, avocados, um, overnight oats that I made. And, and like all of it was great. But then they're like, oh, well, if you don't eat, then you have autophagy and your muscles and your cells are replenishing this and the other. So to, to, to kind of... Enough. Yeah, I think there's merit for having an understanding of this, right? Um, of of these molecules and um, and these supplements and right. what they can do, and just about a matter of what's going to be suitable for you. I think the right thing is for all of us to be aware of what's out there, because also peptides, stem right. cells, and everything else are another topic that we should probably explore. And then thinking about how we should live our lives, right? Because right. everything in life right now, even like. The plastic water bottle. Now right. they're talking about microplastics and everything else. Right. We'll save that for a different podcast. Well, bro, I am so freaking happy you came bro, on. Bro, I love spending time with this you. This is awesome. We we, we well, could literally do it. it we could oh, literally shit. we could literally do this for like five a whole day, probably Dude, a whole week. We I got so much. I, I gotta call your I gotta call your realtor and tell him I'm running late. <laughs> See, this is what happened, man. I fucking hate this. Look at that. Stop it. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> All right, bro. bro We're good. Not, I, I, 
row. I love it. <laughs> oh.